Welcome to the hardware setup tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be setting up any of the audio interfaces that you have connected to your computer. You don't need to use Motu's hardware. You can use any hardware that you desire. I do use Motu's hardware because I believe that it's superior and it also works very well with Digital Performer. Keep in mind that other hardware devices do work well with Digital Performer, so you're not required to use their hardware. So we're going to load up Digital Performer first. I'm assuming that you've installed it on your hard drive. So double click on your Macintosh hard drive and open that so that we can find it. Go to the Applications folder, double click on that, and then double click on Digital Performer. It might take some time for it to load based on any of the third-party plugins that you may have installed, so please be patient. Now we're not going to open up a previously created session, nor are we going to create a new one. We're just going to cancel because we want to make sure that the hardware is set up properly. Go to Setup. Go to Configure Audio System. And then Configure Hardware Driver. Here we go. So Motu Traveler has been selected, and you can select more than one audio interface at a time. That might be useful if you want to have more inputs, if you're recording drums and you need 12 microphones, uh, and your audio interface only has four, you can double them up or you know, triple them up, whatever the case may be. In this case, we only have the Motu Traveler, so we're going to keep it like that. Therefore, it is the master device. If there was more than one audio interface, again, you would be able to choose between one being the master and the other the slave. And that has a lot to do with the sample rate and the clock, which we'll be going over next. So here's the sample rate. The lower the sample rate, the smaller the file size, and the lesser the quality will be. That's not to say that the quality is going to be horrible because when you listen to a CD or an MP3, a CD or MP3 is at 44, 1, 16 bit. But it really depends on what you're doing your project for. For example, for television, you might want to do 48. That's what they require. Film might have a different requirement depending on how they're broadcasting it. So you must ask your client what they're requiring. And a good rule of thumb is that if you're recording a vocal, for example, or you're recording something with a lot of nuance and overtones, you might want to up the sample rate, and then later on when you bounce, you can reduce it. It's really up to you. It's up to the hardware that you have. It's up to the efficiency that you want your session to run at. So try things out as a beginner if that's where you're at. If you've had experience with this, again, just tweak uh, according to what your needs may be. In this case, we're going to go with 44.1. Now, if you have more than one audio interface connected, okay, you can choose to have one of them be the clock. Basically, the clock determines and makes sure that the sample rate remains consistent. If you use an internal clock, that being the audio interface, then that audio interface will ensure that the sample rate remains consistent. If you have more than one audio interface, it might be a good idea to have one of them be the master and then the other the slave so that uh, they're all in sync with each other. So that's what this option is for. If you choose internal, it'll be the audio interface. You can choose a variety of choices. If you have an ADAP machine connected to your system while you're recording, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But uh, in this case, we're doing everything in the box here with the Traveler, so we'll keep it at internal, okay? Buffer size. The larger the buffer, the more the latency. What's latency? Basically, it's the time for you to hear whatever uh, playback that you want to hear. So, for example, if you're recording audio and you want to send your artist some reverb, from your computer, the recording engine that you're using, all right? What you do is you add a reverb bus. You might send uh, that reverb onto a bus and then send it back to their headphones. If the latency is very high, it may create a delay. And this delay 
might not be very musical and won't really sound like a reverb. It might just simply sound like a delay with a lot of echo on it. All right. You don't want to do that. So if you reduce your latency, you'll be able to send somebody a reverb effect on their voice. Um, you might also want to do that externally as well. That's possible, but that's another story that depends on how you're routing your sessions, etc. Now, another reason why you want to have low latency is if you have a software synth enabled and you want to play that software synth and hear it back. Now, if your latency is very high, if you have it all the way up here, you might attack a node and might hear it an eighth or maybe more later. That's not very conducive to making a musical track. So again, keeping it low, if your computer can do 64, that would be amazing. I mean, 64 is a great buffer. I start with 128 and see how the session goes, see how many plugins I have enabled, see when I'm going to be adding uh, instruments. All these different factors will allow me to determine how I should start. And then later on, of course, I might adjust the buffer size. For example, if I'm mixing, I might put it uh, all the way to the top, okay? So we're gonna keep it at 128 here. Host buffer multiplier. That's just basically designed for when you have more than one audio interface connected to your computer. So if you have two, you put two. You have up to four in this particular case that you can connect and, and manage, all right? Work priority. This feature is designed for certain audio cards and the way in which they can uh, communicate with uh, the computer. Uh, I would default on high. However, there are some audio cards that require that you use medium or low uh, in order to receive the most efficient result. So again, I encourage you to play around with this and see what suits you best. So that's what we do with the configure hardware driver window. I'm going to close that and press OK. Next. Configure studio settings, okay? I wouldn't touch much of this unless uh, you run into problems uh, with playback. Stereo buses, 32 is fine. You can reduce the stereo buses if you wish. I wouldn't touch the prime seconds or the quanta. Uh, any of these things are not necessary to touch unless you run into some serious problems. Just use what the defaults are from Motu. Maximum work percent, that's the maximum work that uh, you're allowing your Motu digital performer to do on your system. So the higher it is, of course, uh, the more allocation there is. However, if you're running another program in the background, you might have some problems. So if you decide to run, for example, uh, some kind of uh, internet browser in the background, you might want to allow yourself a little bit of room so you can reduce it to 80. My recommendation is not to run anything in the background and just run Digital Performer on its own with the operating system, obviously, because you need that. So you can play around with this number. You can go, let's just say, 85%, 90%. We'll just go like that. And we'll leave uh, this automatic plugin latency compensation. What that does is that makes sure that the plugins are in sync with the session so that if you keep adding plugins, it doesn't slow down the playback. Now, if you have a whole bunch of plugins, you might get some sluggish performance. Again, you might have to do some adjustments. My recommendation, leave the automatic plugin latency compensation on because it was very well designed and the results are excellent. Don't touch the uh, pre-fill uh, file buffers for quick start. That's a playback uh, buffer and uh, it ensures that uh, the computer has a moment to receive the information before it plays back to you. So that's what that is. And as you can see, it's at 0.4 milliseconds. I'm sorry, 0.4 seconds. So just leave it as it is. So press OK. All right. And input monitoring mode. I was talking to before about sending a reverb to somebody, and that's only possible if monitor record enable tracks through effects is enabled. Otherwise, if you have direct hardware playthrough, you can't do that sending that reverb idea that I'd spoken to you about before, okay? And finally, I wouldn't really touch this unless you're having serious trouble, so just leave it blank. Leave it at zero. 
playback offset, recording offset. That's basically a, an offset in samples for efficiency purposes. Just leave it as it is. I've never really had the need to, to deal with this at all, okay? All right, and uh, just for your information, you can also change the system clock this way without having to actually open up the configure hardware driver. If there's any need for that because you have a variety of hardware devices connected to your system, you may do so using this tab here, okay? So we're done with the hardware setup tutorial, and I look forward to opening up a new session with you.